Ah, the Cold War, a time when the world teetered on the edge of annihilation. But instead of bombs, a different kind of race took center stage, the space race. Who could conquer the stars first? The stakes were higher than you think. Let me take you to the beginning, when the race to the moon was not just about science, but about survival. The Soviet Union has launched Sputnik. October 4th, 1957. Boom. Sputnik shocked the world. The Soviets had launched the first artificial satellite. Americans panicked. If they could launch this, what else could they send hurtling through space, or worse, to our shores? America couldn't sit back and let the Soviets lead the charge. So in 1958, NASA was born. It wasn't just about space. It was a political weapon, a symbol of American dominance. And boy, did NASA have a lot of catching up to do. Meet Werner von Braun, the former German rocket scientist who had one heck of a controversial past. Recruited through Operation Paperclip, his knowledge of V-2 rockets became the foundation of the mighty Saturn V. Yes, the same Saturn V that would carry humans to the moon. April 12, 1961. Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space. The Soviets were soaring and the Americans scrambling. President Kennedy knew he needed a bold move to turn the tide. And oh, what a bold move it was. We, we choose, choose to, to go, go to, to the moon. moon. Kennedy's words in 1962 ignited a fire. This wasn't just about exploration. It was about proving democracy could outshine communism. And NASA? They had to make it happen within a decade. No pressure, right? Before Apollo, there was Mercury, America's first human spaceflight program. Alan Shepard's suborbital flight was a baby step, but behind the scenes, malfunctions, heat shield fears, and enormous pressure. The engineers? Oh, they worked day and night. The Gemini program was NASA's space classroom. Docking, spacewalking, precision landing, they had to master it all. Astronaut Ed White's spacewalk in 1965 was a triumph. But let me tell you, it wasn't all smooth sailing. While the Soviets were early leaders, they faced setbacks. Exploding rockets, failed moon missions, and political struggles. The cracks were showing, even if they wouldn't admit it publicly. 1967. Apollo 1 was a disaster. A cabin fire claimed the lives of three astronauts during a test. It was a harsh reminder that the space race wasn't just about glory. It came with real human cost. Behind every astronaut, there were thousands of engineers. Meet Margaret Hamilton a software pioneer whose work ensured the Apollo computers didn't crash, literally. Apollo 8's crew became the first humans to orbit the moon. Their iconic Earthrise photo reminded humanity of our fragile place in the universe. The Soviets had their own moon program, but their massive N1 rocket kept exploding. It was their Achilles heel, kept hidden for decades. July 16, 1969. The world watched in awe. The Saturn V roared to life, carrying Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins to destiny. One small step for man, one giant leap for owlkind, er, humankind. Armstrong's words echoed through history. But did you know the lunar module almost ran out of fuel during the descent? Talk about a nail-biter. The Soviet Union quietly stepped back from the moon race, their failures too great to overcome. The U.S. had won. But at what cost? Those moon rocks? They held secrets about the moon's history and ours. 
But they were also a political tool, gifted to allies to showcase American power. Apollo wasn't just about the moon, it sparked decades of innovation. From GPS to advances in computing, its legacy lives on in every rocket we launch today. Let's not forget the hidden heroes. Scientists, mathematicians, and engineers. Many of whom overcame barriers of race and gender to make Apollo possible. The space race was more than a battle of ideologies. It was a testament to human ambition. And who knows, the next great space race might take us even further to Mars and beyond. Until next time, keep looking to the stars.